Bitcoin has crashed by 15% and Wall Street has loosed its mind. We also have an amazing buy-in opportunity on a project we've been watching for some time here in the basement that just popped up. I'm going to be bringing up and the National Guard being deployed to the center of America for a solar eclipse. All this and more on today's blockchain basement. We are the bread and butter of all the information that's been swimming across the internet for crypto news. If you're going to um, screw me, at least pull my hair. Yeah. Hell yeah. What do you got? Oh, oh, no. No. Yeah. They could start chopping off fingers. They're yeah. like, give me your seed phrase, but that's, yeah. I don't know it. Over two years, he's made like 17K on I'm Roblox. Yeah. What? Like 12. Yeah. You never listen to me. And we must be married. Yeah, well, how much are you investing? A hundred dollars. Four to six hundred thousand. The think generational so signals are now. Do you now. You're spread so thin. That's how you get in on Snake. Snake's been okay. my biggest winner. Oh, yes. Here we are. Here we are. Welcome one. Welcome all. Hannah, how the hell are you doing? It's been an interesting morning. Had a lot of interesting messages come across our desk this morning. How about, how's the day going? You look fantastic. Got this bright red thing matching the American flag slightly. Uh, how's the day going? America, baby. That's right. Lots of, lots of emotions. Lots Good of day. Emotions. Good Tuesday. You're red, white, and blue in that setup, too. Look at that. The uh, blanket set up with you right there. Her. Um, talking to Owen, he still has a broken microphone, apparently. I think he's just refusing to fix it because he doesn't want to speak. He's, he's afraid of glory. But, uh, you know, we, we're out here, me, Owen, and Hannah. We were watching the markets this morning. Whipsaw, been a very fast-moving price action on Bitcoin. Um, we have basically, this is the seven-day chart. We have a drop from a set right at about $74,000, just a little bit under, all the way down to 62.3. Man, TradFi is feeling the excitement, excitedness that they uh, just missed out all this time when we were on our way up through the Bitcoin uh, cycle, you know, over the past few cycles. It's a whipsaw jackknife movement. I'm here for the velocity. I'm here for the scariness because that's where I've been making my gains. It's been kind of funny watching uh, Wall Street traditional media uh, just so incredibly terrified by the 15% dip that we've had since accomplishing right around $75,000. I'll go up to Trading View here to get more specific on it. But um, really, if you're backed up, I mean, this is exactly what we we're talking about was going to happen. We have the uh, dance, the range dance right at around the previous all-time high consolidating, finding some par price power, some support before being able to move on up. This also gives a chance for these massive institutions to shake longs and shorts off the sides of the boat before Bitcoin makes its major next move. So don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. This is what we're here for. Um, you know, I, I really enjoy uh, seeing a couple of our favorite altcoins holding up pretty good. Hannah, your MOG, not doing too bad at all. Let's check out. I'm going to go to the meme coin land. This is uh, probably Bohm on Solana. Yeah, not the right one. 
I've got a Mog. I've been interested in. Oh God, this is this is <laughs> chaos. Look at this. Zincoin. Zincoin. We, I came across this one like a week ago, maybe a few weeks ago. I've been watching its price action. Uh, very much degeneracy. Uh, this is Zin on Ethereum. Hate the Ethereum gas fees, but man, I love my Zin. So I don't know. I'm thinking about that one. Let's check out a little bit of Mog action. Um, I asked you how you were feeling about it. Like, oh God, are we down this morning? It's really not that bad. Yeah. Really not that bad here. Um, are you planning on continuing to build this position, Hannah? Or what's your thoughts now that you see uh, price? Kind of, I mean, it's got this, you know, kind of downhill motion that it's got. Are you still in and, and feeling strong about this project right now? For sure, for sure. I'm accumulating MOG until further notice. Are you really? Yeah. Okay. Any any money that can just liquid MOG. Just get with Mog. Go to I mean, Mog. For I, now, we need it's more pit vipers, though. That's the problem with the situation, Hannah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, if you're really going to be digging into this thing, we need like a whole setup of pit vipers. Uh, probably gonna have to make that happen. I'm Pink getting my boy some for baseball. He was at his baseball practice last night. All, a couple other kids had some uh, pit vipers on. He's like, Dad. I need to get some of those. They so. were wearing the real ones for real? Oh, yeah. The <laughs> kids, yeah. I went to, uh, I mean, Georgia takes their baseball very seriously. Mm -hmm. I have found this out. I'm, gl I'm glad to see it. Kids sports are a big deal out here. Aaron popping in here. Um, Aaron's been upstairs basically putting together the entirety of all shows uh, here at Hit Network. He's behind all of our thumbnails. But, Aaron, how the hell are you doing? You got an energy drink? Where the hell did you find that? Unbelievable. Costco, baby. Okay, fine. What up, y'all? Hey, zero dollar. Thank you for the I was filming with Josh. Membership. You're filming with Josh? I was filming with Josh. Okay, okay. Yep. That guy works really hard. Yeah, we're Josh busy. is here every we're very day. busy. Uh, till 10 o'clock, he's here. I know. I he's don't insane. do that, but... He's yeah. insane. Shout out to zero dollar Giro. Gifting a blockchain membership. Appreciate you, man. Um, and make sure to join our Discord, the OG chat for the members. Uh, we give some... Uh, Risky, risky alpha, very ahead of the uh, verification of that alpha. So, you know, get in our Discord for that info. But the world is moving fast. Bitcoin price and consolidation of power is moving fast as well. And now we see that MicroStrategy is holding 1% of Bitcoin's entire supply after its latest purchase. This guy is probably going to be able to buy his own nation uh, when we really hit uh, the bull market peak. This is absolutely insane how much Bitcoin he's amassed. Michael Saylor acquired 9,245 more Bitcoin for 623 million bucks in cash, increasing the total holdings to 214,000 Bitcoin. That is absolutely insane. I think he's set. Um, he is set. He's pretty set. Imagine being on your phone and you see billions of dollars in wins and losses, like in so on your phone. You know what I mean? Like the immense amount of power that has. Um, what a... 21 million coins. I know. He what do you think they store 21 all that? 21 million Bitcoin. Oh, it's got to be on cold wallets. Got to you know? be. Yeah, it's like multiple. Yeah, it's got to be on cold wallets. So it, it, everyone was thinking that the El Salvador news yesterday was a big deal. So uh, now you, Bekele, is holding his uh, Bitcoin. Whoa! Hey, blockchain, blockchain report. report. Bam! Five Thank blockchain you. memberships. What a hey. joke. Uh, hopefully, everyone that wanted a membership got uh, hooked up with that one. That's awesome of you, man. Appreciate you. Um, but yeah, this is a, uh, I mean, how much is too much? That conversation has been asked. How much Bitcoin owned by one singular entity is too much Bitcoin owned by one singular entity? That is a question we're running into. Um, <laughs> the shout out to you, man. That is absolutely awesome. Making it rain in there. Uh, but the company bought the latest Bitcoin using $592 million from the proceeds of a recent private offering of convertible senior notes, along with $37 million in excess cash. Um, yeah, I think that this is on cold wallets, but also uh, Naib Bekele, he's got a vault that he's got a cold wallet in. So, I mean, El Salvador's wealth fund on a cold wallet in a vault. Like, that's some pretty hardcore. A vault just lined with cold wallets. Yeah, it? imagine like Die Hard. They should make action movies where the, uh, you know, the villains trying to go after these super weighted cold wallets. That'd be absolutely cool. They should do like a you know? national treasure movie. Yes. And they're... They they have the cold wallet, but then they have to find all yes. the seed phrases. I love That'd be it. sick. I absolutely That'd be sick. love it. We need to do this. I don't know how we're gonna do it, but that's a cool <laughs> idea. <laughs> well, look, we got Mila Kunis. You know, we're we're ready to go. Magen. Magen Kunis. That's Magen the name. Kunis. Uh, Magen Kunis. 
Um, God, I, I don't really look like James Franco anymore. I've aged quite a bit in the last year or uh, two years. Just this face, I used to look like a kid. And uh, over the last uh, bear market, it's definitely got some new lines in there. You know, a li little bit more rough around the edges. But uh, yeah, big, it, it happens. You know, those, those price action dips happen. Uh, they did just really wear on you at a time. But Bitcoin down four four and a half percent right now. Ethereum coming in at thirty two hundred. Don't be surprised if we do come down near the three thousand dollar level on this one, you guys. I'm just saying this out loud, so we're not surprised when it comes. That little stumble point that we did have previously was right at about three thousand bucks. And this has been an insanely parabolic move uh, up and to the right that we've seen over the past uh, few you know months really. So. Don't expect everything to be just up and to the right. This is where we have to wait for our right times to, you know, find good entry points. One coin that I did see is kind of shining right now, narrative-wise and graph-wise, kind of all the things coming together that I really feel like is a good entry point right now. Yeah, um, one of another one. Someone just brought it up in the chat, but Ondo Finance, forty-three cents right now. Uh, this is a competitor to Maple. Maple has fallen off. Really hasn't moved anywhere. Ondo stole the show, stole all the attention within that particular sector, and now it's at $598 million market cap. But if you go to the year, it's uh, looking to settle down at a point that found some support initially on the initial run-up, again, proved itself as support um, before the big takeoff. This is where the attention was all on the project. The people started uh, you know, really feeling good about it. And then right back down here, bounced off of this uh, previous support line, acted as support again, it looks like. And in general, like just seeing the whole uh, attention be focused on Ondo Finance over the Maple move, it gives me a hard inclination to pretty much uh, be more interested in Ondo at this point in the game. I will still keep a little bit Maple on the background, but Ondo is definitely uh, shining right now. I also saw... Beyond Mog, we got Trump token. Look at this thing. What's this? Oh thing no, doing? this is the AVAX version. I gotta go to the the AVAX version automatically populates on me for that. But here's the regular MAGA Trump. And on this token, you know, I am seeing an opportunity spot being created here. Uh, this is the stumble two point before the really parabolic rise to, you know, over or just under 12 bucks right here. And it's coming back down trying to find some uh, health. Uh, health on a shelf, as I like to say. So Right around four dollars fifty cents up to five, and then the bottom of this goes down to three ninety nine. I'm feeling pretty damn good about getting into this one. Nothing I'm going to be married to into the you know beyond the bull market, but I think that this one has a lot of room to grow. So feeling that we saw you know on top of all the chaos from the basic Bitcoin price, we saw this a rogue seller on Bitmex Bitcoin spot market rapidly sold. Over 400 Bitcoin, bringing the price to as low as $8,900. What? Um, absolutely insane. I, uh, you know, was looking into this and, you know, it's basically just a individual or entity that's, uh, you know, unsuspectedly selling a large volume of assets. Hence the rogue uh, sales nature of it. It really reminded me of my chicken. You are getting, uh, do you want my chicken named rogue Aaron? Are you actually going to take it's a him? rooster? Isn't it? It's a rooster. I can't have a rooster. They're so damn wild. I'll Fine. keep it in my apartment. You'll I am get getting chickens though. I am getting chickens. You I'm, are? I'm debating on building a coop or <laughs> buying one of those prefab ones, but they're just not that good quality, but I don't know. Dude, the ones from tractor supply, I'm telling you are the shit. I'm yeah. telling you the shit. <laughs> So uh, Boosted's bringing up helium right now. Um, we'll check it out. What it a, is one of the biggest losers of the day. What a bad A name, though, being a, being called a rogue seller. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's badass. That's sick. You know? <laughs> um, where, where is the blood on helium? I know it is thick. Let's go just pull up the basic chart here. Helium is one of those ones. It's like kind of deep in. It's hardware and blockchain. Hopes and dreams. You know, uh, building out stronger internet infrastructure. Really, honestly, do people mine helium. This is not, yeah. Well, you can do the uh, they mine it right. That, that was that uh, SP North America that rugged me and Nick for the helium miners. It's, yeah, if you can mine helium, it's a matter of actually getting a hold of the miner itself <laughs> so you don't get yeah. scammed. Jesus, like that was a battle. Um, helium honestly does not look that terrible right now. Um, uh, on the year. If it can consistently, I mean, it did break through this bottom trend line of higher lows that it was creating, but so did the rest of the markets. This is our chance, guys. When you see 
you know, we've been watching these higher lows be created on these projects we call and we're like, oh yeah, great, that's great. But then we see the massive dip and this is the moment where we need to be hyper-focused on what we're gonna fill our bags with. Um, and I know there's so many tokens that I've been watching out for, keeping an eye on. It's super hard to decide at times. This is the aggravating part of this crash slash recovery is Stacks was my next on my hit list and it has not given up, given up an ounce. Like over the week, it's down by 3.8%. But really, if you back up and look at this thing, it is, uh, it ain't effing leaving. You know what I mean? This thing is consolidating above its previous all-time high, um, right at that point, essentially right now. Very similar to Bitcoin, but on an altcoin scale. So Stacks still on the get list, but God, I keep trying to get it for 250. I keep just barely missing it. Um, but maybe we'll get more of this rogue seller action, you know, for altcoins. I did see this though on uh, Bitcoin's price action. Kind of was talking about earlier on Bitcoin has a tendency to shake off longs and shorts uh, very effectively and almost to a algorithmic robotic proficiency before the next big pump. And on the time frame right now, just on the liquidation levels, over five billion dollars in shorts are waiting to get destroyed. This is the fuel that just keeps growing. When daddy Bitcoin reverses, it's going to reverse really hard and fast. Once we see that reversal, and I do agree, it will reverse and hit this level again. Um, I think I'm also agreeing that it's going to come in a very violent, fast fashion, catching a lot of people off guard, a lot of shorts off guard that are sitting around waiting for 45, you know, trying to get into the 50s somewhere. They're going to get their faces ripped off when we were back up to 75,000 and $5 billion in shorts are liquidated. That's just the violent nature of this market. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it is player versus player. You just have to be strong enough to be, uh, you know, holding through the big dips and then buying the blood even on the, when it's your own. You know, buy the blood on the street even if it's your own blood. Uh, we got the VZ Fat Cat Whoop be, uh, boosted to Jay-Z up in the chat, locked and loaded. Uh, Arbiter of Truth. I, I'm going to try to wait to give the chat shout out until, ah, but I should just give the chat shout out right in the morning because all the OGs show up right away. Morgan Powell, best guess on quant this run. I'm going to guess right now. I don't know the price. It's $110. Let's see. Oh, no, I wrote 110 into the search bar here. That's not going to work. Uh, all right, Quant, you got away this yeah, time. That was close. 116. I mean, really, you were close. It's 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 a damn stable coin. I uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I love the tech. It's got all kinds of stuff built into it that'll hmm. you know has the potential. All time high again. All time high would be, you know, 359 bucks. It's not a massive move from where it's at right now. Mm. You know, did it? Like, I think of I can think of a hundred things that'll give me a four X. You know what I mean? Like, what did you got, Aaron? With this last pump, had, did it go up at all? I can't um, even... Yeah, it did. It had a pretty fast move up to okay. 145, but then just gave it almost all of that back. Like, God damn, this is just insane to see. I mean, the rest of the market, the crypto market at large has been like that. And you're sitting here riding this chop zone in purgatory. It gets aggravating at times, especially when the uh, tech is super strong. Uh, when it has all these, you know, interlaying, uh, overlapping, you know, connections to banks and things like that, potential use cases, it's all potential use cases. It's not being put into practice. And you can see that on the graph here. So quant, not really taking advantage of this dip on quant right now. Um, this thing would have to fall back down to like 60 bucks for me to feel like, all right, I'm going to get some quant because then 60 bucks up to a previous all time high, which I do think it will reaccomplish the all time high. If it does, Go to 60 bucks, sure, I'll buy a lot. But as, as it sits right now, not really putting too much of uh, my capital into that project. That's just from the situation we're in at the immediate moment. Um, we see on the ETF side, the Grayscale record outflows from their spot Bitcoin ETF with uh, $643 million worth being sold. What is this thing doing? It's like trying to highlight, is this thing is right like, click. You're yeah, just clicking the wrong part of the mouse. Well, button. no, this damn... It, the, I hate these mouse. These, <laughs> these are the worst invention of Apple. All of well, it. Because you have to plug it in at the bottom. You, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. That's trash. You know? Um, That's why I use PC. Yeah, I mean, PCs are superior. 60, $643 million worth of Bitcoin being sold out of the GPTC trust. Um, so, you know, this is the initial outflows that we saw that really created that jackknife, uh, downward price action. You can see 
just straight off a cliff, people leaving GPTC into the traditional ETFs. Then we saw a slight uptick and uh, just jackknifing down and uh, to the right again. So kind of interesting to see this. I know that um, a lot of the selling had kind of subsided on Grayscale. Might not be the case. They might not be done unloading on that. And at large, you know, when we do hit that $75,000 uh, mark, it, in total, there will be $8.1 billion worth of shorts liquidated. A lot of uh, conversation on these liquidation maps and these uh, who's, who's longing, who's shorting, is it retail longing, and institutions are shorting at the same time. Those types of uh, data points seem to be more and more important now because we, we don't... You know, it's not what we wanted, but I guess some of it, some of us here in crypto wanted it. But now Bitcoin is married to Wall Street. There is a connection there uh, with the ETFs. There's a direct correlation, especially with how well the ETFs performed initially. Wall Street sees this. They are getting FOMO even at these high price levels. So, um, you know, the more and more we get interconnected, the, gr the greasier I feel in this industry. I really wish... We were like pirates that were uh, sending encrypted communications and money, you know, without Uncle Sam involved. It's really not the way things are going. Hmm. How do we days till having? Uh, April 20th. So do you think we're yeah. going to hit 75K before the having? I do. I do think you we'll do. hit. Yeah, let's take a look at the. I do think that 75K before the having is very obtainable. In fact, I think we're going to do it. We have April 20th. It's March. Yeah, so exactly a month. And really, that wouldn't be much of a move at all. Pulled up trading view again. So if you look at this, the halving essentially happens right at about this point here. So in order to make 75, that ain't shit. That ain't nothing. You know what I mean? Just to get a little jackknife action up on to the top. One month. I'm like, a lot can happen in a month. That's true. <laughs> like my timeline, my perspective has changed over the last few, like two months. Right? I mean, February. Months, like, oh, shit. Beginning or end of January, we were at forty-two thousand dollar Bitcoin. We moved fast. Yeah, and that's like it's always when I'm sleeping too. It, it is always. <laughs> oh my god! Lately, I'm like I, I cannot stay asleep. I'm like excited to wake up and check. <laughs> like I, check my. Uh, I checked in the middle of the night last night. I was like sixty-three k. Crap, uh, going back to bed. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Zachary Martin, what up, man? VZ Fat Cat. Worst case scenario, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Cycle is different than all others. This is a once every 500 year cycle, mega cycle. People don't realize we got. Yeah, I mean, I'd agree with that. Like Now that we have the ETFs, this regulatory clarity is something that we've been hoping for. You know, regulatory clarity was kind of a moving target when it was conversated about in crypto a few years back. Now, regulatory clarity essentially means, you know, we have Bitcoin ETFs laid out and now CVDCs. Though they're being, you know, built within the nation states, I don't think that we're going to see an XRP become the CBDC, uh, you know, overall world system like some of those conversations were. But this is regulatory clarity at large. And, you know, with 75K in the target before April 20, 20th, absolutely. I think we can definitely hit that. Um, I did not discount the potential of hitting 100, but that velocity has been cut down. And now we're kind of just ranging as I... This was the bearish side of me saying we're going to get slapped once we hit just above those halt time highs and just range in this this uh, kind of sector for a bit. Um, and I'd imagine this will last until essentially right after the halving, probably into May. Um, and in June, you guys, like I've been saying this for a long time, in June, it is still my opinion that actual rate cuts will be coming. Yes, they initially hurt the risk asset markets, but then risk, ass risk assets absolutely explode in those situations. It's all happening this year, so you got to think quick. On Michael Moore is asking, last having, did we get a crash before or after? Let's check it out. Let's check it out. I believe it's that a great it was. Question. Yeah, I mean, I look at this thing every day, but it's good to just remind myself. So the having was, it was May of uh, 2020, and really, yeah, not shit. Not, not really much. You got one before the having, but that was COVID. How do you count that in? on like you know a historical time frame and expect it to happen again when it was a uh an outlier or a complete outlier and now um you know people are kind of used to it bob from accounting had an important question let me know what your question is i missed that question didn't see it fly by but to put it in there again yeah it looks like the having was may of 2020 and really, it didn't uh, do jack shit, but go up and create a little Bart Simpson just to make everyone freak out, think that we're going back down to 3K. I remember this 
uh, Bart Simpson design very well because many people were saying, oh, we had our chance to take profits. You guys effed up. Everything is different this time, but in a bad way. And we are going back down to four, three K did not happen. Did not happen. And some interesting on this is this portion of the graph in the last cycle right here, where we had just breakneck speeds on the upside. That was crazy. <laughs> and then that jackknife right there, look at that. So that's what happened last cycle before really big stuff happened, right? Um, Bob from accounting said, if Bitcoin hits 75K before the halving, should we put our coins in USDT to save the gains? Question mark. Mm. Uh, not USDT. USDC. You like USDC See, we were talking more. about what? that we use Tether. We were saying yesterday we like Tether. I don't know. You like USD, USDC more? I've been hearing things about Tether. But okay. I don't... Well, there's always things being said about hearsay, Tether. Hearsay, hearsay. They've been investigated so many times. Yeah, I don't now. know about Tether, to be honest. But answer the question from Okay, you. yeah. So if we think, should we put our gains into USDC right before the halving to keep those gains? I mean, if you're looking at... It's a case-by-case -case scenario. But if you're looking at a 10x from an initial investment... For the love of God, take profits on that. Don't sit there and iron hand these things into the center of the sun. If you are up 10x on a project or even 5x, take half, you know, take half, put it aside as dry powder, and then you have a house bag still in your possession that's still in that asset that can still outperform everything else like you think it's going to, but you'll also have a fresh bag of dry powder to buy a nasty dip should it occur in the future. I think that taking profits off of the table is insanely healthy. I think that if we sit here and watch this market go absolutely parabolic, and there will be people that are watching this right now that will just literally ride that all the way up and then all the way back down again. And I know there's a lot of people that say there's going to be no big sell-off because ETFs are here. The sell-off is probably going to be lessened to a large degree, but there will still be blood all over the place in the altcoin sector. And I assume that you're asking about the altcoins in particular. Um, you know, but yeah, that, that would be my opinion. Like how I have it right now, the avalanche that I have and the ICP that I have are all house money. I have already taken initial investments plus profits off of those, those projects. About avalanche in a big way at 10 bucks. And then ICP was like a $3.25 entry point. I took that initial entry point plus a little bit out and uh, really, you know, I was really feeling like it, we had house projects. I really love taking the money that I make in crypto and then putting it into my home or into my family. That is essentially where I feel like the longer term wealth and legacy and value can be retained is in this homestead that I'm trying to put together for my family and making it better, improving it, building new buildings on the property. Things of that nature matter just as, I mean, I, I can't get there without being intelligently invested into crypto. But once I do get there and I could pull the trigger and yeah, I got a car, you know, don't be afraid to do that. You will not go poor taking profits. I love that saying that DZ put out. And plus, you know, by this regard, let's look at how much longer we have because now we covered, you know, we've had some great profits. It's been awesome in the basement. We've had some great calls. But then, you know, we've been, we're in this chop zone. And in, in this chop zone that we're at currently, um, we'll take a look at it here real quick. Back this up. God, these candles are yuck. Um, I do want to add, you bought a car, but you didn't buy like a freaking no, Lamborghini, no, yeah. Nothing stupid. Land Rover. Like it Nothing was a, stupid. it was a good, it was a good buy. I mean, I feel like the people that need Lamborghinis or gigantic, you know, Two hundred thousand dollar Denali, Denali just have tiny penises. It's almost oh. like you know? they're trying to overcompensate yeah. for something. Exactly. You know that's, you know. Oh, and then there's Owen. Okay. Or they We've, might. Yeah, you know, he's coming out. He just let me know. So too bad you don't have a mic to defend yourself. You, oh my God, the internet's gonna be full of questions now, Owen, because you don't have a microphone. See how that works? Um, but here we have our recent jackknife to the downside on Bitcoin. And this three-step parabola, so to speak, over the last few months. Let's take a walk down history lane just to give you guys a good bill weather on what I'm feeling like we're where we're at in the markets. Essentially, I feel like we just experienced this moment right here. We are, I mean, this 
plays into more of what Nick was saying. And you know, I was agreeing with Nick to a large degree that this is going to be an early blow off top. But my God, there are so many different uh, confluence data points pointing to this. This jackknife moment that we had, uh, we were at $40,000. You know, I mean, you could make the argument that, you know, essentially we're more so right here. And this is the hyper cycle. But we, it's either this point right here where we went from 20K, the previous all-time high, sounds pretty familiar, right? Jackknife down and then start ranging real quick before you punch on upwards. And if I'm looking at this and having to make a call which one we are truly at, I'm actually thinking we're more so right here. So you're not in a bad position if you want to be adding, you know, two new bags, you know, projects like Tia token or, um, you know, these Bitcoin layer twos, Bitcoin layer twos, things that are built around stacks. I mean, I, it makes me happy Josh is so bullish on them too, because I have always felt like being able to build on Bitcoin is an extremely bullish narrative and, and process to be able to open up to the economy. I think that's going to be hot. And I think for where we are right now, uh, more so similar to this uh, moment before we had a big punch up to the top side. So Making me feel bullish. Yeah, Making man. Like, bullish. you know, we got time, baby. We got time. That's what I'm saying here. It's like, I was feeling, um, I'm still feeling like the beginning of 25. I did. Nick's going for the end of 2024. We're pretty damn close. And we're both laddering out anyways. So even if we're both wrong or one of us is wrong, one of us is right, we're going to be getting close to the mark. That's the power and DCing in and DCing out, mm -hmm. you know, change your life actively with this stuff. The answer questions at... chat. He has a Honda Pilot. Oh yeah, I got a Honda. Not Pilot. financial advice yeah. though. Buy a Toyota if you're gonna buy a car. You know what? Aaron? A Forerunner, a Tacoma, a Sequoia. Uh, I wanted the buy a Sequoia. Go fast. I wanted the Sequoia. You might pay a little bit more, but hey, you're not gonna be putting that thing into the. Uh, but the, the, bring it to the mechanic okay, for the like hundred thousand miles. Is a six no, Honda's fine too. Honda's fine too. I went for the Honda Pilot because it's a six Honda. Cylinder. Honda is a good brand too. No one needs a four wheel drive out here unless you're like, no. like my but van Toyota, can drive man, through the woods. They just out. go forever. I know. I have a church pew of Toyota at my dad's house. We built a church pew of Toyota yeah. on it. It's my first <laughs> Honda that I've ever owned. Unbelievable. I still own the Sienna. I love the Sienna. Um, I love heated seats. And dad vehicles. I am very a, bullish on Toyota. Yeah, I know. We have a Forerunner Gunner next door. We literally have a. There's on the other side of this wall. There is a YouTube channel, Forerunner Gunner. There's um, so many Forerunners and Tacomas you know, in this at this building. It's crazy. I spent a lot of my childhood in a Honda Pilot. My best friend's family like used to drive us to school in a Honda Pilot. It's a good kid. Good it's a kid car. car. Yeah. That's what it is. You know, if I got the Sequoia, another thing I was thinking about when I was looking at the Sequoia, that thing's like four feet off I the like ground. Hondas. Hondas and Toyotas yeah. are great. Listen, My first car I'm was a Honda uh, Civic. A Honda Civic? And the transmission went out. Isn't that crazy? Well. That's not like Honda. No, it's not. My first was a Toyota Corolla. Mm. Um, but yeah, I do want a tank. Michael Moore nailed it. I really, you know, that's really what I want. I want a tank. Is that so much to ask? Unbelievable. Um, but yeah, I'll oh be getting... Oh my God. What? There's a place in Alabama you can rent tanks. I want to own a tank. I don't want to just rent a tank. Actually, I think it's like $300 an hour. Yeah, but you can't we take it We could start home. that business. A start a tank renting Let's business? Let's get a tank. <laughs> Let's get a tank. Should we don't start we a tank back land? liquidity pool? Yeah. There it is. You know, Who wants to come rent our that, tank? I mean, you know, that would be... Uh, we could make it... You can't get ones that shoot, though. They block the in Alabama. The apparently, you can. They have the ones that shoot. Yeah. Okay, we. Uh, I'm going to need to be trip. looking into this. I'm getting completely sidetracked for the best reasons. Sorry, possible. Sorry, I'm getting really distracted it's by the, the chat. Best they got reasons they got some possible. sick whips. And I approve up Mazda. Like Mazdas are good too. I like the. Um, oh God, what was it? I can't remember the Mazda. I had a '66, which is garbage. Complete garbage. So 66, but it lasted forever. We built uh, some Mazdas out when I was in high school, though. It was pretty bad. Look at Owen's just triggered. He wants to talk about things so bad. He's trying to figure out the sound now. We got him really going right now. It's going to be great. He's going to figure it out. Nah, bro. Um, this is interesting on the macro side, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Another reason why Bitcoin's going to the moon. Evergrande, China has accused Evergrande of committing fraud, what? totaling 78 billion dollars making it the largest case of financial fraud in history dwarfing enron worldcom ftx and of course bernie madoff's 68 billion dollar ponzi 
Now, granted, Bernie Madoff pulled off his Ponzi when money was much more expensive. So if you count for inflation, this is actually a little bit smaller than Bernie's. But I digress. China's Evergrande being accused of $78 billion in inflated sales from 2019 to 2020. Just a year's time frame. Absolutely incredible. You can see the just comparison of the other frauds that it's referencing with Enron, the gigantic media disaster that was for America, and uh, Luckin Coffee. 2020. What is the equivalent of Evergrande in America? Uh Evergrande, well, there is none. I don't think because Evergrande and the real estate market in general make up a huge portion of China's GDP. Now, in America, yeah, it makes up a portion, but not even comparable uh, to China. I think it's either like 30 or 50% of the Chinese economy is wrapped up in their real estate and Evergrande being at the top of that pile of real estate developers. What they had is in a situation where Basically, they built these gigantic buildings, um, you know, gigantic city uh, skyscrapers, places where they can weld people in the doors once they decided a new flu season was out and they wanted to control them That's again. That's wild. Um, and they left them out to the uh, to basically be hit by the weather. So they deteriorated. There wasn't enough money to finish the project. They demolished the entire thing. So... Well, don't they insane. just build buildings to just build them? Yeah, they want paper. It's like paper money that they have a slight tangible good showing slight progress for, and then they just completely leave it alone. It's like a rugged shitcoin project. I feel like in Panama, there was a couple of skyscrapers that were just completely abandoned because, you know, Panama is owned by China. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You just were like, that no one lives sense. there. Yeah, why it does it make there? sense? Yeah. It looks nice from the sky, you know, but up close, you're like, ooh. Well, and, you know, I used to work for uh, developers, and I was on the kind of HR hiring side for commercial construction and industrial construction. Industrial construction, I don't think this happens nearly what we're talking about. But in commercial construction for China, particularly, they will build entire, uh, you know, shells just to have something on paper for these gargantuan loans that are outstanding, say that work is slightly moving forward. Oops, sorry, we couldn't get the workforce. We got to demolish, need more money. So it's just a, it's just the gift that keeps on giving really to the Chinese Communist Party. Don't know any, I don't know blockchain basements, saw one local and looked it up. Oh, they're talking to Resvani or the Corolla. I want to get a, I used to have a uh, Toyota Corolla, yes. Uh, Toyota Corolla, very nimble. Very nimble little vehicle. Um, it's 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 quite, it's almost like a rally car. It's actually one of the, like the top rated cars mechanics. Is it really? Uh, like, say is a good car. It it was legit. Most of the top cars that mechanics will say to buy are Hondas and Toyotas. Oh, um, is their superior? Always. You know, the Camry is the most invisible car. Really? What? So like people won't steal it as much, or people don't see it because it's just just so average. Yeah. yeah, that's so true, yeah. huh? You're like an NPC, like ultimate gray man vehicle. But the Camry is the ultimate gray man vehicle. You'll never see a Camry on the side of the well, road, though. My Sienna is a gray man vehicle too. Like no one expects me to come out of a Sienna. You know what I mean? Like they could be honking at me and stuff. They don't expect me to be some angry six six person that's ready for uh, you know <laughs> coming out war. of a van. Yeah, so you know they just kind of lay in low. I will say you do cool. have little chrome skulls on the side Those of the Those are small skulls. Okay. That's a little warning. If, see, you get up close. Like, if you get close enough you can see yeah. there's uh there's a skull waiting there. Uh but yeah fun times in China. Here's fun times from Binance asking prime brokers to enhance KYC to block U.S. nationals. Fantastic. Thanks for the no FUD worries, What's this bro. guy doing nowadays? I know. he's uh, Actually, we have a story on him. He's starting up a... Uh, God, I think I have that story. I better have that damn story. Uh, CZ's gone... Yeah, here it is. Has he he's gone go rogue? Well, <laughs> he's gone rogue. He's announced a new educational project involving NFTs. Uh, Co-founder and former CEO announced on Tuesday morning in Asia... That he's hiring for a next project called Giggle Academy. Giggle, <laughs> Giggle Academy. Giggle. I don't understand. Why would you name this Giggle Academy? It's Very easy. Weird. He, he's he's our homie, homie of the channel, sharing our streams. I've still got some questions. <laughs> What's this Giggle Academy deal? He described it as a gamified, adaptive platform that aims to provide free basic education for all. Okay, cool. Why Giggle though? I don't understand the Giggle. Giggity. I guess Giggity. it has us oh! talking. <laughs> <laughs> no hannah you were completely that character from family guy this morning like holy snapple oh i have God. never seen you act that way before is 
incredible. Put me um, in the <laughs> ring. Wow. Put me in the ring. Oh, my God. Noted as a zero revenue platform, Giggle Academy plans to gamify its educational content using a system involving points, scores, rankings, and non-fungible token badges. However, Zhao noted in a separate X post that there will be no cryptocurrency token involved with the project particularly. Concept uh, paper also discussed a future proposition of adopting a learn-to-earn system. Kind of cool. Okay, kind of cool. Kind of expanding on that Coinbase uh, learn-to-earn uh, process. I know a lot of people love them. Taco just loves those things. And I have probably about $100 of them still to do. I have completely forgot about them. But they do a good thing. A lot. I uh, the learn to earn. I had my aunt message me, and she's like, "Hey, I got a message from Coinbase that I get a free ten dollars if I learn about Near Protocol." They need more quizzes. There's not enough quizzes. Yeah, yeah they made. They need more. Just make it a little bit harder. I got, uh, I got a question though. This this yeah. might hurt some feelings in here. Okay. How do we feel about NFTs though? Because when you read that article, mm. it it really did not spark joy that he was you know releasing a new NFT project. Yeah. No, I mean, I didn't get excited about the I just feel like side. they've lost their spark. <sighs> it really, They'll they be have back. to be cult classics. That's They'll why I back. like, you know, Hannah's plugged into the Do you think it'll be back like anymore? it was last bull run, though? Like, it was crazy. I, yeah. ooh, you think so? You think so? Pudgy? Pudgy would probably pull off what Bored Ape did, but beyond that, I don't think, like, a bunch of different NFTs are going to go to the moon. Like, I mean, it was crazy last board yeah. how many NFT projects were dropping on time. But it was such you a couldn't new concept. Even, you couldn't even mint like all of them. There's so many. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a very new concept. Like, is it, when it first came out, it was like, you know, it was kind of weird feeling. You NFTs know? just kind of put a sour taste in a lot of people's mouth. Yeah. But the, now, you know? Just the concept of like tokenizing assets, the concept of an NFT makes sense. They might mm -hmm. not be called that, but it will be back. Yeah. They'll be back. Well, it's like the real world asset shift. You know what I mean? Those are tokenized assets. Yeah. Um, and those include NFTs use, uh, being used for those. Another membership. From Zero Dollar G Road, just making it rain. Put a franchise up in the chat. What did you? What did you? Yeah, I think I'd like NFTs better too if it was off ETH. I hate the gas fee. Solana, yeah. the love of God. Solana, Solana NFTs exist. Yeah, I know. So do uh, I did Cardano, Cardano NFTs. I, I, Bitcoin I in those Cardano yeah. NFTs. Yeah, ordinals are on the come up. Ordinals are definitely not going. Yeah. Those anywhere. are probably the ones that we're discounting the most. I, I think that. Bitcoin ordinals are going to go nuts. I was supposed to make my first ordinal last week, and I didn't because I was not very bullish really? on the collection. But I'm still waiting to mint an ordinal. I'm not against NFTs in the future. Like, I know it's going to be a thing. I just, mm. I'm thinking of, like, NFTs as, you know, like, the frogs and the cats and the dogs. <laughs> and be back. I mean, the farm animals. Just whatever. Just crazy. all those. I don't know. They'll be back. Well, I mean, Pudgy is. It's, Somebody it's, asked earlier when Pudgy's game comes out. It's already out. But they're like developing it, making like it's they're probably improving trash. it. Yeah, they have like closed doors that aren't open yet. Closed doors that aren't open. Yeah. Well, why the won't they let us? Not in? finished. Well, they're fine. Building it. They're Can building we... hype. All right. Do the penguins have guns? They might. I think they do. Y'all let me know when you find a crypto sure. game that's actually fun. Yeah. There is none out there. World. There is none out there. Duh. I hate being Pudgy negative, world. but they all suck. All right. Listen, the leaders of the gaming industry, in Hannah's opinion, right now are a blockchain gaming or pudgy world that's just a work in progress it's going to be in the incubator for a minute hmm. shrapnel and nifty shrapnel. league nifty league nifty island shrapnel is sick Aaron. Shrapnel's you cool. i don't shrapnel. know about the longevity of, of shrapnel being in my top three but definitely They're right now it might be trash. one trash <sighs> nifty league nifty island is cool you can use your nfts to like go into a world and and would talk. anyone sell their home as an nft in here right now no. god yeah no I, I i don't think so i'd i'd have to see it proven i mean are you gonna buy your first house with an nft hannah do you imagine that happening or are you just gonna be i know you can get a loan with nfts yeah <laughs> <laughs> i should houses. though like it would make sense but yeah. no it won't be here well that's like the chain link and uh even cardano's built out to handle rwas in a pretty big way avax um rwas are an interesting uh idea when you think about it. they're trying to roll out real world asset tokenized assets and that's already been largely represented in nfts and ownership you know verifiable ownership so it would be interesting to see how that balance of you know who gets which market share in you know, the next few years uh come about i think that tokenization is quicker to happen than nfts representing you know digital goods and real world goods but, you know, I, I was surprised last bull market by uh, NFTs. 
At this point, I'm thinking that we're underselling or underestimating Bitcoin's layer two and their ordinals. Um, so, you know, that is part of the reason why Stacks is my number That's why one I bought target. Some. You got some Stacks. Yeah. What did you get it in at? What did you get at it? Oh, it was only recent. I sold some, uh, I think I, I sold some stuff I was no longer uh, liking. So I yeah. sold it and bought some Stacks because... Josh, Josh has got me bullish on L2s, man. Dude, you should be, for good damn reason. I know. Yo, like, and Josh has been talking about DSI, and he's been yeah. talking about, like, mm -hmm. specifically CZ coming back and doing something yeah. with DSI. Mm -hmm. I'm also in a meme coin on Solana called CZOL, C-Z-O-L. Not you a shell. Be. Not a shell. But the people in on that project are also, like, the narrative's go coming along well, guys, like, soon. And now, today, we have this news about cz yeah i'm like they know something yeah he's, CZ is he, gonna come back he's CZ gonna be the, the darling of desai and this is the first day that we're hearing of cz again 100 so he's we'll he's only popped his head out of the ground for desai notice mm. you know what i mean like True. that that first tweet that he had after he got ousted it was all just desai hey i'm gonna be a desai researcher now now we see this he's rolling out a learn to earn situation for crypto for Four. Giggle Academy. Giggy, giggity Academy. Giggy. Crazy. <laughs> um, all right. So I have a really long-winded explanation from Paul Grewal, but we'll summarize it. What's going on with Coinbase and the SEC? Commissions above discuss conduct constitutes a gross abuse of power entrusted into it by Congress and substantially undermine the integrity of these proceedings and judicial process. The operation of the American judicial system rests on the fundamental proposition that every party who comes before the court is bound by and adheres to the same set of rules. For the reasons explained below, the court imposes sanctions against the commission, the Securities and Exchange Commission, for bad faith conduct in obtaining, maintaining, and defending the TRO and denies the commission's motion to dismiss without prejudice to refile in accordance with the District of Utah's local court. This is a big slap in the mouth to the SEC. <clears throat> and this is continuing to ride the same original thought that I had. When the SEC went after Coinbase and all the original dialect was brought up, it appeared to me, just if I'm looking at the force to the trees here, that Coinbase worded all of their questions to the SEC years ago, knowing that this moment was coming, knowing that they'd be custodying BlackRock's ETF knowing that they'd be custodying 80% of the other ATFs that are available to American investors right now. This is, it is a win for Coinbase. It seems like a very controlled situation to keep the basic retail at home that hasn't really learned about the power of crypto or the upside to crypto yet. The bull market's just starting, retail interest really pretty still low, uh, still pretty low right now. And seeing that the SEC put this lawsuit against Coinbase while also approving the world's largest asset manager in an ETF using Coinbase as the custody agent showed me it was a scam. It was a psyop. I think that Coinbase is going to be just fine. This is more noise in the trees that they're making to keep people on the sidelines as things are about to go uh, absolutely parabolic. And this is just a reminder, like they are putting these FUD you know, articles and all these lawsuits out against crypto while we're in this situation right here again, which is where I do feel like we are and people are going to get scared. They're going to be like, I don't know if I want to get by it in. I don't, I want to wait for $10,000 Bitcoin. I saw it happen on BitMEX last night. I'm going to hold out. Kappa was right. And then what happens is absolutely max pain. Max pain is up only. And that is the truth. It was kind of a dangerous thing to say when we were uh, approaching this uh, time frame, but <clears throat> when we had this initial run up, we didn't get the crash back down to the 30 to slash 25s like we were looking for. That was Max Payne. Max Payne is up only at this point. This is the beginnings of times getting very, very good in crypto. And if you're here, smash that like, share the stream, and pat yourself on the damn back for being so damn brave and intelligent to move into a disruptive asset class right before the rest of the world wakes up to this immense system that's being rolled out to humanity. It's happening regardless if we're here or not. Uh, larger data sets, 
larger information systems are coming. The handling of that data is coming. The, the private companies that will play pieces in that overall ecosystem, they're going to go to the moon. And it's about finding the absolute best projects that we can before this all completely rolls out. We're in process right now and good on you for being in here. We got like the awesome 310 people watching. That's freaking awesome. You guys, Are you, you're, you're going to be well positioned, but it's about spreading this information to as many others that are stuck in fiat and losing buying power as possible. This is the time. This is our time. Um, well said, Drew. Yeah, wow. I mean, there's a lot going on. Wow. You know what I mean? I'm gonna myself on the back. Weird. This is digis. I need a. I need the gel blaster. Right I need the gel. We still got those. Right I've here? been I've been hitting targets off my balcony. Have you really? With the gel blaster. What? I like pick something. Okay. <laughs> Don't get the cops go. You might get in a gunfight doing that. No, hammer. I'm up there with the squirrels. Maybe I'll pow pow. You know what I'm saying? I mean, honestly, me. <laughs> I know they could think it's a real gun, right? And come no, at you, no, paint no, it no, black. No, um, no shot. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. So here is uh, I want to talk about just the insane chaos that's happening right now in meme coins, and that is the new crypto narrative coming in hot pre-sales oh, no. without tokens. Oh no, this is huge. Your money gets burnt instead. Ten million dollars of it slurf pumped to new highs on the news. Only available on Solana. <laughs> This is absolutely <laughs> insane. I was talking to BJ. That's how I feel about that. Um, BJ made out like, I mean, he is sitting well up. He was up at 3 a.m. messaging me about this ridiculous coin that is now uh, basically mooning. I wonder where we're at right now. Let's just go check why he's it not out. here. He's up so much. I know. Well, he's, he'll be in the rest of the week. He had to deal with some, uh, some stuff. But, you know, right here, we're sitting... At uh, absolute chaos. This is where the token released. The pre-seller tokens were burned. They realized, oh my God, the pre-sell tokens burned. Is this a retarded project? We're retarded. We're going to send it to the moon. So that's what happened. And here we are. Uh, really not a bad graph when it comes from a TA standpoint. This is Slurf. Uh, some of the most beautiful chaos I could have ever imagined for crypto to happen right now. And here is Justin Sun announcing that he is donating revenue of the trading fees collected to the slurf pre-sellers so wasn't he on the run justin son uh i'm always on the run no, so he's another know. guy that went rogue you know uh yeah <laughs> i mean he's 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 a chinese crypto sweetheart you know what i mean china loves him america not so much so yeah tron doesn't make uh, a lot of uh control maxi's happy but he is it's it's pretty incredible to see uh china leaving him alone, alone the way they have that is something you got to question why that's happening. Uh, but Slurf, absolutely insane. The 24-hour trading volume on Slurf is 200 times the entirety of Cardano DeFi volume in the same 24-hour period. Dang. Not, the, not to crap on your bags here. Just giving you a change of perspective. While we're all crying, we are bagging. Okay, and this is... <laughs> This is the just I there's so much here to unpack. Like Yeah, but when did this guy buy? Um, I mean, he's talking about just the overall volume on Slurf. He might not even be in Slurf, just highlighting that it's over 200x what Cardano. Sure he's not. Yeah, I mean, sure mm. he's not. I mean, he probably is, you know what I mean? But Cardano, dude, what the hell's going on here, Aaron? What's going on? I don't know. Cardano, I haven't looked at my portfolio. Well, it, it got up to like 75, I want to say. Uh god damn, 80 cents. All the way back down to 60 cents, 61 yeah, cents. It's fine. I know it's fine. Um, God, maybe this be, might be my actual time to load up on some alts in Cardano. I wanted to get Hunt token. And when I'm thinking Cardano, I'm going after Hunt token most uh, first and foremost. Cardano sitting at 61 cents. Owen's just wiggling in his chair over that one. Wiggle, wiggle. Avalanche up. <laughs> Do you remember that song? <laughs> I'll do it to make a wiggle, wiggle for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we need to get that guy on the TikTok show. Um, Avalanche at 60 bucks. Owen feeling decent about that one though, right? You know, a little better. Yeah, he shakes his he head. He bought Avalanche? Head. Yeah, he, he we had a hamburger and then hammered into Avalanche at $10 a token. Nice. So, yeah, but. Good job, Owen. Cardano, what the F? You know, Cardano just sitting here stagnant. Polkadot, um, you know, giving up about 13% on Chain the week. Chainlink, look at Chain that. Link, I know. And this is another one I was look like, should I just be adding to this? Time uh, to buy. I have a lot of Chainlink. I'm probably going to be all right on Chainlink. Like, I'm at the point with Chainlink where, you know, I'll probably be able to pay off my house with what I got in Chainlink right now. So I'm not 
really feeling like selling any. Might just be topping off a little bit of the bags near. Crypto After Dark. Aiden needs to get with the program. I know. What is this? Agreed. Um, you know, and then near protocol. This is a, a deep pick from my wife, my intelligent, beautiful, wonderful woman, Tia. Uh, and she uh, bought near at a dollar ninety, so she's really happy about that one. Um, and then internet computer token, obviously as well. So these are the bags I'm watching right now. Render still, oh my god, and bit tensor, the saddest day alive. Um, things aren't really giving up much uh, strength right now. This is just playing into why I think we're in that beginning. Uh, jackknife down before the real bull market kicks off, you Yo, guys. We got 200 Solana over the weekend. You got 200 Solana? Oh, yeah, $200 Solana. Yeah, That's right. Remember, Taco Solana. said it on Friday. Oh, I thought you were saying everyone got $200. Of I know. Solana. I like, where? Yo, where? I didn't get it. Yeah, I want 200 yeah. Solana tokens. Like, come but on. $200 Solana was crazy. Like, yeah. It's been a minute. We're going higher. And pretty close to its previous all time high. I was Hold saying yesterday the on the show, Hannah, I have adjusted my price target for solana mm -hmm. i do think that solana will accomplish what ethereum did last cycle i think that solana is going to hit 550 bill and i God. think that that token is going to be a thousand dollars a unit Bruh. that sounds so good yeah you know i mean i'm just <laughs> more of that and more of that <laughs> i'm solana. getting some very special reaction it reminds me of that meme of that girl eating cotton candy Oh yeah, at like the hockey game or whatever. Oh yeah, she looks Hannah's so face. Serious. She's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. um, and Solana, man, just the Telegram bot. I just wanted to note this daily volume on the Bonk bot skyrocketed to two hundred and forty-seven million dollars. Just <laughs> insane growth in this. Um, definitely a new all-time high for that in particular daily volume. Just going off the Richter scales. We got Zin. I'm going to be looking into Zin token a little bit more. I do enjoy Zins, but uh, I want to find out a little bit more about this project. I'm slightly interested, though. And then, oh, God, where is the big one? I had a kind of an interesting story about this is this is chaos. Oklahoma National Guard, members of the 63rd CST will provide first local responders with additional hazmat response capabilities to 100,000 uh, incoming visitors that are all flocking to Oklahoma to see the solar eclipse. Now, the basic mainstream media jargon, the thing that's fed to you, the, uh, in my opinion, scam <laughs> lie, is that they're just there to handle large crowds. Now, yes, large crowds do require some excess personnel to be able to hand or handle just in case you have a big fire, something of that nature. But the chemical, radioactive, and hazmat response teams that are cooked in to this, uh, I am a little bit worried that there is a targeted attack that's been, wind has been caught by the U.S. government that we could be facing something like that or, you know, God forbid, the other side where it's, you know, perpetrated. But essentially, we're going to see a large contingent of National Guard forces in Oklahoma along this long strip of land that goes along the uh, United States from about the center of the country up to around New York. And uh, solar eclipse going to be going down. A lot of people, I didn't even realize that the solar eclipse was uh, as big of a deal okay, yeah, as what? people made this out to be. You know what I mean? Like, I felt like the last solar eclipse, we saw it. It was great. We, like, went back inside. I was like, that was cool. cool. Awesome. Yeah, All right. That was cool. You they know? did kind of make it a big deal, though. I was in high school. Did when you? When that happened. And, like, they were, had us all go outside and gave us glasses. And, like, like everybody was talking about it for, like, two days. And then it was, like, a 20-second thing. Very fast. And, like, nothing. I didn't even see it. It was so neat. No. I didn't even see, but it was neat. But yeah. I didn't know this was about to happen. April well, eighth, there's supposed to be some. And hold on, last time we didn't need the national guard. I know that's the the kind of what weird the, thing about it what here. Is this? In the event of a hazmat emergency, such as an industrial oh fire, everybody so, get iodide. Yeah, um, like they're putting out hazmat teams, and so. they've also <laughs> said things about Americans and and nuclear. They're gonna pay Americans that are affected by, by <laughs> oh radioactivity, radi yeah, yeah, radiation. They oh, they yeah. passed something that if you are an American that's affected by radiation, you will be paid for Jesus. whatever reason. Like two weeks ago, T ninety <sighs> brings up a good point. What is like this? some he goes here in the Midwest, we got nothing else to look forward to. We have billboards with dates so nobody f forgets. Like that's the, the solar that's the thing to do. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, bro, I've been to some places. All there is to do is watch TV and go fishing. Yeah, I love the two, but after a while, it gets a little. Nebraska is amazing for hunting pheasants, I will say, and uh, um, you know, obviously deer. Y'all in Atlanta, doom. I'm definitely not in Atlanta. It's interesting when people say that. I live We're in Atlanta. north of Atlanta. No, I'm like a half hour from Talladega, dude. No. I'm like yeah. almost in Alabama. Yeah, you know what I mean. Me and Drew are out in the woods. I'm in Calm the down. Woods, but you know, he's got, some, he's got a point though. If you're stuck near Atlanta, poor Hannah. Hannah you're in stuck Atlanta, in Atlanta. Baby. Oh, Hannah. You Hannah know from what I mean? Atlanta. Uh, that needs to be a rap song. I'm gonna I'm a g- gather my troops and we'll be fine. Oh my god. <laughs> Be like Sherman. Yeah, you, let's see how that goes. All right, we're going to go put together Hannah's militia. Appreciate yeah. every single one of you for joining us. Hey, Aaron, thanks for coming down. Yes, sir. XR Pete, username, what's up? Zero Dollar G, Bob from Accounting, Gurian Meister, Jess Jen, Zachary Martinson, Diesel, Nicole Minister, Truck Dano, and the Rumble Chat. We got two bros mining, Word Sister, all the OGs. Appreciate every single one of you. I'll be back wow. tomorrow with more alpha. I will be doing my late night live streams as soon as I get my daughter's house, uh, bedroom finished being remodeled. So until then, I'll see you soon. Woo!